Previously on this channel, we looked at some of the most incredible, longest running attempts at perpetual motion machines ever created. However, today we'll be looking at some of the stranger attempts and claims of perpetual motion. Most of these were created for entertainment purposes only by people who are well aware that perpetual motion is impossible, though there is one invention from man who truly believed to find the source of unlimited energy in the most unlikely of places. So let's jump in. Now's a good chance you've seen a drinking bird before, although it was probably only in cartoons. It's a toy shaped like a bird that will repeatedly dip its beak into a glass of water, right itself again vertically, and repeat this process seemingly indefinitely. This invention is credited to Dr. Miles V. Sullivan, who patented and began marketing these toys in 1945, though the idea and other variants of this machine predate his invention. Although it was just created as a toy, the drinking bird has incorrectly been categorized by many people as an attempt at a perpetual motion machine. And look, at first glance, it does appear to be as the toy requires no external power source, yet will continue to operate for days on end without intervention. But since we know perpetual motion is of course not possible, what's actually going on with this novelty item? The drinking bird is a form of heat engine that is powered by the temperature differential between the head and the bottom of the bird. Beneath the cute decorations, the bird is just two glass bulbs connected by a glass tube. Air is removed from the apparatus during its construction, and the bottom bulb is partially filled with a liquid, usually dichloromethane in modern versions of the toy. The top bulb and the remainder of the bottom bulb then fill with vapor from the liquid. To start the bird's cycle of motion, someone must simply dip the beak into the water. The beak and the head are made out of an absorptive, sponge-like material that will soak up some of the water, but the weight of the liquid in the bottom bulb will be enough to return the bird to a vertical position. As water begins to evaporate from the bird's head, it lowers the temperature inside the top bulb. This causes the vapor in the bulb to condense, thus lowering the pressure. Since the warmer vapor in the bottom bulb has higher pressure, it will continue to push the liquid up the glass tube and into the top bulb. This makes the bird top heavy, causing it to tip over again and dip its beak back into the water. When it tips over, the tube rises above the water level in the lower bulb, causing warm air vapor to rush up the tube and push the liquid back down. With the weight back in the bottom bulb, the bird will stand back up and the process repeats over and over again. Although the drinking bird will repeat this process at its own leisure without intervention, the speed at which it drinks can be manipulated. By applying a source of heat to the bottom bulb or an additional method of cooling to the top bulb, the cycle will repeat much faster. Of course, while it's often been described as one, this was never designed with perpetual motion in mind. Although it can operate for an extremely long time, it is limited by how much water is available. Only a little bit of water is absorbed each time the bird dips its beak into the glass, but given enough time, the water level will eventually decrease to the point where it's out of the bird's reach, causing the toy to stop working. It all began with an Etsy listing from William Lee, a man who specializes in handmade kinetic wall art. By winding up springs, these sculptures would move in repeating and somewhat trippy patterns for hours at a time. However, in addition to his wall hanging sculptures, William designed something he sold as a perpetual motion simulator. This design quickly became popular, with many knockoffs being created and the machine being featured in countless videos across YouTube, though many of these videos and products were not so upfront about it only being designed to simulate perpetual motion. The machine itself appears very simple in design. It is a wooden platform with a wooden bowl suspended above it. The bowl acts as a funnel with a hole in the center that drops a ball bearing onto a metal track. Balls will speed down along the track until it curves upward, angling backward to launch the metal balls back into the bowl and repeat the process. Now, from first glance, it should be obvious that this isn't possible without some sort of trickery involved. Even if we were to pretend that this was a perfect frictionless system, the ball would still only be able to travel to the point from which it initially began falling due to gravity. It would never be able to get enough height to clear the lip of the bowl. And once we do factor in friction, the metal balls barely have enough momentum to make it up the ramp, let alone launch back into the bowl. Despite all of this, the machine has become extremely popular both as a novelty item and among people who yearn for a true perpetual motion machine. Now, the key to its success is very likely due to its sleek, simplistic design. It is built to make the base look like a solid piece of wood, despite it actually containing a magnet and electronics that require a battery to operate. When powered on, the machine contains a sensor that detects when the ball is coming down the ramp. Whenever this occurs, it will briefly turn on the magnet to increase the speed of the metal ball. This magnet then turns back off so that the ball can whiz past it without it getting stuck and clear the launch back into the ball. 
There's even a capacitive sensor hidden beneath the wood that acts as an invisible power switch. Although the design is visually appearing, anyone purchasing one of the knockoffs that were not upfront about it being an actual perpetual motion machine would likely have been very disappointed to discover the accessories included with the machine were five ball bearings and one USB charging cable. The concept of a perpetual magnetic motor dates back almost 800 years. Though designs have changed, the relative principle is the same. You affix a number of magnets to a rotating wheel and another magnet next to the wheel that will act as the propulsion system, so to speak. In a typical construction, the magnets on the wheel are fixed with the north pole facing outwards, and the stationary apparatus beside the wheel has a magnet with its south pole facing towards the wheel. As the magnets approach, the opposite polarities will attract, causing the wheel to rotate. When the magnets get close, a small protrusion on the wheel will strike a wire that causes the magnet on the apparatus to briefly pivot so that its north pole is facing the wheel. This will push the magnet on the wheel away, then the stationary magnet will flip back to its south pole to attract the next magnet on the wheel. This is how it's believed that such a device would work anyway, even if the math doesn't theoretically support this design being possible. Regardless, many hobbyists and amateur inventors over the past several centuries have done their best to construct a perpetual magnetic motor, and although many have claimed to have succeeded, none of these claims have ever been substantiated. The concept of these magnetic motors is regarded as pseudoscience, just like any other perpetual motion machine. But in 2017, YouTuber Electronics and More put a bizarre twist on the traditional magnetic motor. Most motor constructions involve a wheel suspended vertically, while this new design featured the wheel lying flat on a table. It wasn't the first design to use a horizontal wheel, but it was the first to use a fidget spinner as the motor's wheel. The next step was to place a powerful neodymium magnet on each of the fidget spinner's three points. Two were aligned perpendicular to the center of the device in opposite polar orientations, and the other was placed parallel to the center. Two bar magnets were placed alongside the fidget spinner, which slowly caused it to begin moving as the magnets interacted with one another. After an extended period of very careful and precise aligning of the magnets, the fidget spinner began to rotate in a consistent direction. Not only did it maintain this motion, but it quickly began accelerating to an incredible speed. This demonstration was viewed over 43 million times, and many of those people walked away believing that perpetual magnetic motors were about to revolutionize society. However, anybody who watched the video to the very end knew that this wasn't the case. After showing off the preparations for the initial magnet setup, the YouTuber was able to get the fidget spinner to produce the same effect even with all of the magnets removed. Although the obvious answer would be that there was some sort of internal motor, the fidget spinner itself was completely unmodified. So. How was this motion possible? It was revealed in the last seconds of the video that there was an air compressor blowgun being held just out of frame, and the fast-moving air was what caused the fidget spinner to rotate. This seemingly bizarre contraption was merely created as a tool to help show the sorts of trickery that were employed with false claims of perpetual motion, something that is extremely abundant on YouTube. British chemist, writer, and inventor David Jones had a rather interesting and diverse career. He earned a PhD in organic chemistry from Imperial College London, but one of his first jobs after earning his doctorate was working on infrared spectroscopy. After a couple of years working with spectroscopy, he became an independent consultant working with brainstorming services and conducting scientific demonstrations for TV. He continued doing independent research, and he is best known in the scientific community for a study on bicycle stability, a paper concluding that Napoleon's wallpaper likely contained enough arsenic to make him sick, but not enough to be fatal, and for designing a NASA experiment to grow a chemical garden on one of their space shuttles. But despite his various achievements and research, Jones is best known for his 38 years of weekly articles in New Scientist and then Nature. These articles were written under the pen name Daedalus, and they often featured bizarre, impractical, and satirical inventions. However, not all of his inventions were proposed as jokes. He was one of the first scientists to propose a 3D printer or a space elevator, and he even predicted the possibility of hollow carbon molecules over a decade before they were discovered. It's estimated that about 20% of his inventions went on to be seriously researched or even patented. And yet, none of these inventions are what the esteemed scientist is typically remembered for. 
As a science communicator, everything Jones did was intended to be consumed by the general public. This is why his articles mixed science with humor, and why he designed so many demonstrations for TV that only used household items like bottles, plastic bags, and bicycle pumps, rather than utilizing state-of-the-art scientific equipment. But of all his public demonstrations, what could be more memorable than showing off Daedalus' series of perpetual motion machines? In a 1981 issue of New Scientist, Jones showed images of one of these machines and challenged readers to guess how it worked. It was also shown in public exhibitions so that people could get a better look and watch the machine in action. However, despite challenging people to guess how it worked, it is claimed that only one person ever told Jones the correct answer and that Jones refused to confirm or deny if they were right. Before Jones's death in 2017, the secret was sealed away in an envelope and the machine was given to the Royal Society where it is on display. Two people were chosen as caretakers who occasionally have to service the machine every couple of years or so, and they are the ones who know with certainty how it works. So what exactly was Jones's design? It is a spinning bicycle wheel inside a glass case that in many ways looks reminiscent of the design of a magnetic motor. In fact, it's reminiscent of the designs of a lot of different perpetual motion machines, which is kind of the point. There are almost certainly a number of extraneous elements added to the design to act as red herrings, making it difficult to guess exactly how the machine is being powered. Affixed to the wheel are three metal boxes, and as they rotate, they pass through two U-shaped parts on either end of the box. In front of the wheel is a metal box that features the words Dreadco, the fictional company where Daedalus worked as an inventor, and on either side of the box is a light meter. Above the box appears to be a rudimentary cathode and anode, a copper pipe runs along the bottom of the box and halfway up the sides, and in the bottom corner of the box the pipe enters and exits a heatsink using coaxial connectors. It is unlikely that all of these different pieces are important to power the machine, but there is no consensus among experts who have examined the machine which ones are necessary or what exactly they're doing. Then again, it's probably better that way. According to the Royal Society archivist Virginia Mills, the two people who know the secret of Jones's invention found the truth to be rather disappointing. Several decades ago, the US Patent Office declared that all patents regarding perpetual motion or perpetual energy would be rejected as a matter of course. And this makes sense, since it is a scientific impossibility and the patents are a waste of the officer's time and the filer's money. Of course, that didn't actually stop people from trying to submit them. So for our final entry today, we're going to be looking at a patent filed in 2001 by inventor Herbert Floyd. The patent is titled Perpetual Motion Energy of God on Generating Stations. And no, God is not a weirdly stylized acronym. Floyd is essentially claiming God as the co-author of his patent, even beginning one section with God and I claim. According to the application, Floyd obtained perpetual energy as a literal gift from God, and he would teach it to the United States as long as he could first patent it. He also explicitly stated that he would only share his gift with the United States because apparently God is a big fan of nationalism and opposed to the idea of helping others. But regardless of whether perpetual motion was divine in origin or not, Floyd did have a physical invention he wanted to patent that he claimed would provide unlimited energy. His machine was a pair of generators separated by a bridge, each powered by a 22,000 volt battery. These batteries would have the ability to recharge themselves, but the secret of perpetual energy was to have the batteries charge one another. According to Floyd's largely incoherent rambling, he also seemed to believe that converting the power back and forth from AC to DC would generate additional power. He indicated that the further apart the two generators were, the more excess power could be produced during the conversion, hence wanting them to be placed on opposite sides of a river and connected by a bridge. Now, obviously, none of this was ever going to work. Not only is the maximum efficiency for an AC-DC conversion only about 95%, but some amount of power is always lost when transmitting it over distances as well. Even if that had all somehow been possible, there are still a lot of other confusing elements in this patent. There are descriptions of all sorts of connectors and plugs that don't go anywhere, and a circuit breaker with no discernible purpose other than that it looks like something that probably belongs to a generator. But the most bizarre element of all is that deep down, it seems like even Floyd didn't really believe this invention would work. Despite claiming that his machine was powered by God and would perpetually generate limitless energy, he still wrote that the batteries would need to be replaced every 100 years. Because that's how perpetual motion works. 